this video is quite overdue. This is going to be my update for my bootcamp for month number three, four, five, and six. So the last time you guys probably saw me, I, w I did an update for month number two. Now month number two was just intro to React and a little bit of Redux, not that much. But then month number three felt much more of the same. It was basically, you know, a lot of practice with React and Redux and try to get things right. And it was a tough month. Um, as we kept going, as we were following through, I felt like I was reaching the sum and I was like, yes, after I finish this, I'm going to be a real developer because that was going to be the end of the front end curriculum. And it was tough. But once we got there to the end of month number three, I thought it was going to be downhill from there because my TL have, had previously stated how easy Node and Express were in the back end. But it was a little bit misguiding because Node, even though in retrospect it is easy with, with Express and Kinects, is completely different to how you're accustomed to writing JavaScript. You got used to React and React components and functional components and class-based components and this and that and installing things from the MPN store and all that. Fine, that's great. But when you're setting up a server, it's different. It's not harder, it's just significantly different to the point where you feel like you're learning from scratch. And that was quite frustrating because we only had one month of it. Leading up to React and the front end, we had three, uh, two or three months. Yeah, three months. And then for month number four, we were going into Node. And I was like, well, well, it's going to be nice and easy because my TL has been telling me that it's nice and easy. In retrospect, it is easy, but it was quite misguiding because you had to implement not only Node and Express, but also databases. And databases is probably the least, uh, is what we received the least of education or yeah, how do I put it? So databases, I don't feel like we went in depth, but I understand why, because data science is a field of its own and we're supposed to just be uh, jack of all trades, you know, full stack web developers. And yeah, so I accomplished month number four. I'm going to I'm going to say something. It was quite hard because I was starting to feel the burn. I felt like I was burning out, not burned out in the sense. Oh, I hate this. I, I want to stop. I want to just, you know, quit the whole industry. Not that type of burnout. Burnout in the sense that if it, it felt like it never ends. That's when I that's when you start to separate people who are in the boot camp because they really like coding and people that are in the boot camp because they just want a higher paying job. If you can make, if you can get past month number four and you don't feel burning or sorry, burnout, if you don't feel burnout, then I feel you're going to be quite successful. Yes, there's still a lot of things you need to learn in order to be a successful developer when you start your career. And technically, once we finished month number four, we were told, well, you're technically full stack developers now. Um, month number five and six, they are for labs. So Lambda Labs, you get put into a group with data scientists, UX designers, and other web developers, and you collaborate in a huge project. The project that was for me that I got assigned to was called Groa. Groa is a movie recommendation platform where it serves you recommendations unbiased well since netflix is no longer the king of streaming now that there are there's significantly more competition and everyone every one of the content makers are basically making their own streaming platforms and they're pulling their content from netflix netflix has had to invest a lot of money in creating original shows at first original netflix shows were amazing oh yeah oh that's really good and this and that but as time has gone on they have significantly invested more because now that the content providers or the content makers are pulling their their stuff out of their catalog and now they're providing a competing service, Netflix has basically invested a lot of money in a lot of shows and those shows may not be good and they push that to you. Now, every time you log into Netflix, if you have a Netflix account, pay attention. How many of those recommendations are Netflix originals? Of course, they're going to push their own content. Netflix is not stupid. If they spent billions of dollars making all of these movies and all of these shows, 
they're definitely gonna push it. That doesn't mean that it's right for you, that doesn't mean that you like it, but that's what you're gonna see first. And it makes it really hard to find really good content that is attracted to you. So Grow is an application that focuses on taking your history of ratings, uh, your watch list, what you rate really low, what you rate really high, and then it recommends you movies similar to what you rated high and avoids serving recommendations to what you serve really low. So it's a really massive project. We have like, we started with, I believe, 10 people in the team, four web developers. No, we were five web developers, one UX designer, and then four data scientists. Then uh, the UX designer ended up, um, I don't know what happened with her. I believe that uh, she was not happy because she was the only UX designer and there was a lot of things to do for UX in order to meet the MVP for her and pass labs. So I believe she got reassigned to work with another UX designer in another project. The data science team, uh, they're really good. I don't even know what they do, but I know that they're messing around with a lot of models and really complex stuff. So I believe that my team is really competent and we haven't really had issues uh, like infighting amongst ourselves or any anything like that. I believe that everyone has put on a lot of work and they have done a really great job. So that that's my lab's experience. I still have two weeks of it left and we're nearing completion to meet MVP, but we're probably gonna go above and beyond because there are certain features that are being wrapped up as I make this video. So yeah, um, that's basically it. I haven't really made any more videos because I feel like it was more of the same each time. Uh, because of the circumstances that we're living in with the whole pandemic situation, uh, Lambda School has started to be more flexible with their students. For month number four, we did not have a build week. Build week is at the end of that module that you're learning, you have a whole week to work on a project and so forth. We, I did it for the first three months, but for month number four, they gave us an option. You, you either do a project or you take it off because people were getting stressed. Uh, like I said, I was being burned out in that month and now many people that have kids who would normally be in school during their classes are running around in people's houses as they take the classes so they're not as focused. So one of the things is that I also been applying to quite a lot of jobs and I can see how it's going to be a tough it's going to be a tough road. We do have careers assignments and career coaches that help us, you know, build resumes, portfolios, how to stand out, how to look professional. And I've been following all of those classes, but even then, I've been applying to a lot of jobs and I probably got like three callbacks and they're just from recruiters, not even from the company themselves. As soon as I talk to the recruiter, they ghost me. Uh, that's probably because they see that I know so much, but they say, well, you don't even have a year of experience. How do you really know? And I'm like, look at my GitHub. I've been coding since November, nonstop, almost every day. And that's why I know all of these technologies and my mind is fresh, so I'm a perfect fit. Well, they don't like to hear that, so they start ghosting me. So I need to change my uh, application strategy. One of the things that is not in my favor is that I'm looking to move from New York State down south, either Virginia, North Carolina, Atlanta, even Texas. I just want to go to a hub where there's a lot of jobs for web development or software engineering so that I don't have to move if I get let go or if I resign. Right now where I live is very rural. I'm not going to be able to find a job in office. I'm going to have to do it remote. And the problem is, if you're going to do a job remote, you better have experience. And that's the problem that I have. I, I can't show experience because I'm just starting to finish Lambda. And I want to have at least a year experience working in an office before I apply remote. Because I'd rather have remote than work in an office. But I want to work in an office so I can like sharpen my skills in a corporate setting. So that when I apply for a remote position, I'm the right fit. In addition, now that the whole situation that we're living through, 
many people are going to start providing remote positions so I'm going to apply to those as well hopefully uh, if I get a job I'll make a video about it due to the crazy times that we're living in many boot camps that are remote are going to start to sell you that as I'm going to start to pressure you with that oh we're remote we're moving to remote and they're going to use that as an opportunity to sell you stuff and all I'm going to tell you is do your research don't buy into hey um, I'm, I mean I need to get a remote job so I better start coding do your research because this field is not for everybody during my lambda time I have gained so much weight <laughs> it's not even funny I, I literally just sit in all day I sit all day and I, I did a standing desk for a little bit but the problem with that is that it was just like a, uh, it was just like a mini table on top of this one but I need two monitors like I don't know if you can see it but I have a big monitor here and uh, the laptop monitor there when you're in the lectures I highly recommend to get a second monitor because when you're in the lecture and the instructor is typing their stuff, they have multiple windows open and it doesn't even give you a chance to 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 have space for your own editor. So you have to switch between, you know, the Zoom window where they have like two or three things open and you not only do you have to pay attention, but you're supposed to code along, so you're going to be switching back and forth and trying to type in your uh VS code what they're doing but they have so many things open that by the time that you get back to the zoom window they have done something that you missed and that was really infuriating for month number three the instructor had like four or five things open and that was infuriating he had multiple windows and we had no space in our own laptops for that so I ended up having to just take that standing desk and use a big monitor now, now that the weather is finally nice where I live, like it, it is literally May 16th right now. And it, today is the first day that's over 65 degrees. That's ridiculous. That's why I want to move. So if you're looking for a web developer uh, and you live like in Pennsylvania, Virginia, Texas, whatever, let me know.